Okay, so have you ever wondered like how to get that deckle edge? That's what this is called, where it's like a torn edge on the side of watercolor paper. Because I will paint on these beautiful pieces of paper. This, um, this brand that I just discovered is amazing. Now I got it from Dick Blick, but I got it in person at their store in Savannah. And when I went online to look to see if they have more so that I could order more because I already am a little bit obsessed with it and literally have only used three sheets, um, <laughs> but they don't sell it on their website. And so I'm gonna have to do a little more investigating about that. But they, this company does actually have a website that you can order directly from them. I have bought the 320 GSM paper. I think it's like square, like grams per square. I don't know. Anyway, I think like, like meter or something. I think that that's the weight it would be if it were a huge piece of paper. Anyway, there's 20 sheets. They're calling this an A4. And um, these are two pieces of paper that I had here. But they all have this gorgeous, gorgeous deckle edge on all around, all four sides. My problem is, is I love an eight and a half by 11 size, which this is either that or approximately that, but I don't really always paint in an eight and a half by 11 size because it's kind of an unusual shape to me. I also have a tendency to like to group together several small pieces or just do one huge piece. So eight and a half by 11 is kind of between. So what I do is I tape off the the areas that I want to paint within to make my little my little images. Incidentally, I got this Japanese tape from, um, it's made in Japan from um, St. Louis Art Supply, which is like one of my very new favorite um, art supply companies. And um, it this, this tape is fantastic. I love it. It tears pretty easily and it doesn't stick to the paper so much that when you peel it off that you lose some of your paper. Maybe a little bit if you press too hard. But so far there's been no leakage like underneath like seeping under the tape if you press it down. And I've used some really dark colors along these edges. So I'm pretty pumped about that tape. That tape is awesome. Anyway, what I like to do is tape off some squares so that, or rectangles, so that I can have these small pieces that I can then mount onto mat board or something like that and frame because I think, I just think that's so beautiful to me and there's so much in this one little space. It just makes me happy. But I don't really like to, I mean, I'm okay with putting the mat board over the top because it does clean everything up. But part of the beauty of this paper is this deckle edge where it's literally been torn off from one big sheet. Well, as you can imagine, um, that's a little tricky to do by hand. So I started experimenting recently with how, how, how do you do that? How do you do it and make it look good? And I'm still not a professional at it, but all of these have the deckle edge. By the way, I did not tear this. This also comes in this size. That same brand comes in that size. But I did tear some of them, and I'm not perfect at it yet, as you can see right there on the edge. And I think I did this edge too. Maybe that's the one that came with the paper. I think this was the edge that I tore. So I'm not perfect at it yet, but you know, I'm gonna keep practicing because I feel like I'm definitely gonna get better. And I feel like I could probably frame this with these edges showing and still feel pretty proud of it because I still feel like that looks pretty good. It might not be exactly the same style as theirs was, but it's still really pretty to me. Again, this is another one that I did and I actually tore these three sides myself. I'm still learning, like I said, so I gotta be patient with myself because, um, actually I take that back, I tore just these two sides because I'm still, still figuring out the tricks. <laughs> but one thing that I can tell you is I, on this first one that I had torn, I actually did something different than I did on the subsequent ones. So I'm going to show you what I did. First of all, what I have to do is um, I need to cut this side or tear this side from this side because there's a pretty straight line that where my piece of tape was that I just want to go ahead and, and tear it. Now the issue is, is that if I tear halfway on this line, it's going to look great on this side. My problem is, is there is too much space on this side to match the halfway point on this side. So this piece is either going to, I'm going to have to very meticulously tear off more like a small piece, which is trickier, 
or I'm just gonna have to commit to putting it underneath a mat board. So, note to self, harder to tear off a skinnier piece than it is to tear off a full piece. So this is what I'm gonna do though. I Because this one I already am gonna have to fix, I'm gonna focus on this guy getting enough paper. And so I'm gonna say that that is about the midway, or that is about the equal amount of space from my farthest line to where my ruler is. This is just a um, stainless steel non-skid because it has this little piece of cork on the back ruler that I got from the art supply store. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark up where I think approximately my midway point is and I'm trying to make it as straight as possible without having any kind of a, you know, a level or anything like that. And I'm marking it up and then I'm just going to carefully lay my ruler down in the same spot. Um, I can actually even tell that my tape was off a little right there. But what's most important is that this is even like is um, on the same straight line as that is, which I feel like this is probably pretty straight. So what I do is I put this ruler down or what I'm trying to do is I put this ruler down and then I prep because it's a metal ruler you have a really sharp edge to be able to press on so i'm holding this down hard enough that you can see my um the beds of my fingernails are actually turning white and so i'm pressing down pretty hard and i'm also pushing really hard on this side up against the ruler to the point that i actually have a really good solid fold in there and that incidentally is called scoring so I've scored my paper. I'm actually going to fold it over even more on this side. And then what I did on one of these tears, my, my other tears, my first tears, that I didn't do on several other of the tears was I actually took a teeny bit of water in my finger and rubbed it along this line just a little bit on the back side, not on the front side, because then you're gonna risk, well, I feel like I'm gonna risk getting it onto my paint. And I don't wanna do that or onto my painting, and I definitely don't wanna do that. Incidentally, you wanna do all this if you after you've sprayed some sort of fixative or something like that, particularly with a watercolor, because you don't wanna like risk um, moving anything by accidentally dribbling water or something like that. So you wanna make sure to use your fixative or something first before you would tear your paper. So now that side is wet, I'm actually gonna kind of fold it over the other way also just to reinforce that whole little seam right there. It's wet, it's well scored. I think probably you could take it and just tear it. But I'm gonna do what I did the first time that seemed to work really well. And I'm gonna hold my ruler along my score line that is wet on the back side, And I'm gonna take my other piece and I'm gonna tear it off. Now, what you have to be careful with is go slow enough that you don't accidentally tear too much of um, into the paper or that it kind of starts to run on you, like the tear line starts to run on you. You know, sometimes that happens where it'll like go jagged all the way in a different direction. Okay, what's great is whatever side your ruler on is on, it actually leaves this classic deckel edge mark. So on there, like factory paper, there's actually a hard line right here from where they did essentially exactly what I just did. Now they might use machines and I did it by hand, but there's like a, there's like a hard line from whatever thing that they put down to create a, a surface to be able to tear the paper off of smoothly and by putting that ruler down on this side of the paper that i tore from it actually left that same type of a line whereas this other piece doesn't actually have that line and so depending on what you're going for that's something to keep in mind if you want the line you want the ruler to be on the side that the art is on so because i have this great line and these great lines that came from the factory and because all of my edges are approximately that same almost half inch space from the edge of the decal to the edge of the artwork i'm going to go ahead and do the same thing on this side and i'm going to say that that is approximately where i'm going to put my ruler and so but i'm going to flip it over to this side you, could, you probably could skip that first one, just do exactly what I'm doing right now and say, this is approximately where my ruler needs to be all the way across. This, black, this dark gray line is kind of my marker for where my artwork ends on a square or on a straight edge. 
And so I'm gonna put this here and I'm gonna lay it down carefully so that it stays in spot. And I feel like this edge is actually trued up to the edge of the ruler. And incidentally, this piece also has that similar border, that similar size border as the big piece. So these two are both gonna be great for putting on top of matte board. So I'm just doing the same thing again. I'm pushing down really hard on this ruler using, you can see my fingers are getting white and the fingernails are getting white underneath them. I'm pushing down really hard on this ruler and I'm also pushing very hard on this outside of the paper or the underside of the paper up against the ruler so that it makes that really nice score line. So now that my paper is scored, again, I'm just gonna um, flip it the other direction and just a little bit on that seam, but then I'm gonna flip it back and I'm going to put a little water on there again. And that way uh, it can dampen, dampen the paper a little bit so that when I go to tear it, it makes it that much easier. So I'm putting a little bit of water straight out of my little water cup on the back side of that artwork. And then I'm gonna open it back up again. And I'm going to put my ruler back on my score line, which is a good, really good solid score line. Put my ruler back down on there and take my piece of art that I'm tearing off and just slowly, but not too slowly, carefully as best as you can tear across and get a nice clean tear again that is a beautiful little piece this part's a little bit deeper on the border but that's because they actually left a lot more decal and to me again beautiful part of this paper is that it's handmade and it has a hand decal on it a hand decal edge so i'm going to kind of run my fingernail across this edge to not flatten out, but to put that little deckle edge back out instead of rolled up. And that way, as this water on the backside dries, it will reinforce that deckle edge. Now, my deckle, again, looks a little different than their deckle, but I'm really okay with that. And honestly, I'm gonna put my piece this way. I'm gonna sign my name down here on the mat board and I feel like that dark signature down here and the numbering of my piece is actually gonna balance the whole piece. So that's what I've learned and about deckle edge and doing your own deckle edge if you should choose to use a larger piece of paper than you're intending your art to be at the finished point. So I hope that helps a little bit because I really didn't know what to do at first. So thought I'd share that. Happy creating. See you later.